Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about the face tab and the interior tab in the product editor. Uh, a lot of times you're going to want to set your face heights to a specific number and Mosaic has a very specific way in which you have to use the face tab uh, in order to split your faces and your drawer fronts and be able to control the heights. So that being said, you, when we get into this, you definitely want to make sure that you start with your face tab. You're building out your face, make sure that is all set up the way you want it. Then you jump to the interior tab after to set up the interior. Never reverse, so you always got to do the face tab first. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try to set up my, my drawer face, my standard tall cabinet setup with drawers below. That way you can see how Mosaic can be a little finicky in which it asks when you ask it to do certain things. So my bottom drawer is 11.25. My middle drawer is 11.25. This is where you you can find things a little bit frustrating because you, you want this, you're going to want this one to stay the same and you want this to shrink. Sometimes you have to, you can work with this little lock height tab and in certain occasions uh, you can get, get it to pull and stretch the way you want. Once you get to all these middle points, it does tend to get a little bit uh, jumbled and where it pulls it from regardless of this lock height button. The proper way in order to get this to, to work the way you want it to is what you have to do is you have to clear your whole cabinet so you're, now you're left with a blank slate. So split it, set your height and your type, so we're going to make it a drawer, from the bottom up. You can either start from the top down or the bottom up, but you have to start from the bottom and work your way all the way up. So then you go 11.25 without splitting it again. So when you split it, that's where it sets your location. I'm going to split that one more time. I'm going to set this as a drawer. I'm going to set the height at 11.25. I'm going to split it again. I'm going to set this face as a drawer. I'm going to set the height at 6 and 6, 3 quarters. I'm going to split it again. My middle door is going to be 36. And I'm left with 18 and 5, 15 sixteenths. And we're going to make those a pair. So as you can see, you pretty much have to start from the bottom, work your way up. Uh, like I said, sometimes if you have something built out and you want to move something, it does work to use this lock height button. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. For instance, uh, you if you want uh, to change this to 24, you sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. That time it did. So let's go back to 18. Uh, let's say this one. 12. So that pushed my my whole front up here. So if you want to try to get a little more control, the best way to do is just to clear it and build it out yourself. The secondary option is to keep track of your lock height. As you can see, this one's locked. This one's not locked. This one's locked. This one's locked. And now it's locked. So if I change this or any of these, it's going to shrink this one. So 12, as you can see, it's shrinking that one. 15, still shrinking that one. This one's locked, this one's locked, this one's locked. If I change this one, it should still shrink the middle one. 11.25, change that back, 11.25. This does work about 60% of the time. Sometimes you can move, just pay attention to the lock height button. Say I want to make this one the one that is stretching. I'm going to take this, or you're going to lock that one, so now the top one's unlocked. It's always going to automatically make sure one's unlocked, so you have to unlock the one that you want to stretch. So then we're going to lock all the rest. Lock that one, lock that one, lock that one. Now if I go up here and I set this one at, uh, I want to make it smaller, so I'm going to say 12. Like I said, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. So the easiest way is to 
make sure that you clear it, split it, split it, split it. And what the, you split it, set your height. Split it, set your height. And as long as you do that, that's the best way to do it. So now that I have the face set up, we're going to go to the interior tab. Uh, as you can see, you have these little gray lines that go across. What that's indicating on your interior tab is that is a split on the face. So you have currently got a split there, split there. You can also split these again. Maybe this one you just want it to be a um, an open. And we'll make that a pair. And then you have a full full view of all the different types. So you have extra you have lines everywhere. Um, what you want to do is build out the interior now because if we view the 3D, we currently have a big wide open carcass with drawers, but no shelves or anything. So you want to make sure you add your shelves, your stretchers, your fixed shelves, wherever you're planning on doing that. So you once you get your face tab set up, make sure you have these lines there. You're going to start splitting it. So I'm going to split it and I'll usually start before I add any adjustable shelves. I'll add all my stretchers and my fixed shelves. So right here, I would say maybe a stretcher. So you drop in a split, you change it, you change your type, and then I want to center it on. You can do flush top center or bottom. And I'll show you the difference between those. I'm going to change this to a fixed shelf and I'm going to center it on this door so you can see what that does. So if you hit center, it's going to put it right in the center split of where this door is. Currently it's just an open opening, so there's nothing there. Uh, so maybe it'd be better to show you down in a drawer. We'll move it here. Uh, fix shelf center and you want to drag it close to which one you want it to lock onto before you hit that uh, lock to split then it will lock onto that that location there so as you can see it's locked onto the center between these two drawer fronts if I change it to flush top then it brings it flush to the top of the shelf becomes flush to the top uh, the split of the door it's not flush to the top of the actual door. It's uh, half of your uh, your pair gap. Then you can also hit flush bottom, and that basically just does the opposite, puts it flush to the bottom. So I'm going to say no lock here, and I'm going to move this. And the reason you want to hit lock is because if you ever stretch this cabinet vertically, that way it'll stay in its location. Otherwise, it'll just kind of float around relevant to the uh, equal distance between the other shelves. So what do I want here? This is a fixed shelf that's going to go between these two doors. So we have fixed shelf, and I'm going to do centered. This one here. I'm going to do a fixed shelf again. I'm doing this part as an open cabinet. So what I want here is I want it to be flush, uh, sorry, flush bottom. So that way, when I show you the side view, my door is fully overlaying the, the shelf edge banding. And then I'm going to split this one more time. I'm going to do the same thing except for, so move it close, flush top. And flush top is going to bring the drawer front flush to the top. Again, it's still just half of the pair gap. So say I want a stretcher now. I want to split and add a stretcher centered. Then I want to split that one and add a stretcher 
centered. Okay, so that's pretty much the uh, fixed parts that are all locked in place now. Say up here I want to have vertical dividers, you can use multi-split and you can split it into, you can do the shelves multi-split or you can do vertical dividers. Uh, there we go, so I'm gonna have, let's do six equal sections. So now you have vertical dividers in that section, maybe I just want an adjustable shelf in that one. This is an open part, and then those are drawers. So that's that's pretty much how you would take an empty cabinet and you know build out something, a new cabinet with new faces. Of course, there's a lot of ways that you can get deeper into it, which I won't do at this moment, but at a, in a later video maybe I'll I'll chase it. But you can also adjust certain things in here. You can adjust toe kicks. Uh, different part adjustments here. You can edit the shape of the part. You can go back to the face tab. There's a whole bunch of things in here you're, you'll probably use a lot. So the reveal adjustments is, say you have like a, you want a one inch reveal on the left, or well, if I did negative, it would do recess it in. So that changes your reveal. You can delete a pull, you can change the location of the poles, you can change it to a double pull. Uh, you can man manage your drawer boxes if it's not a metal side drawer box. You can manage your uh, lock adjustments if you use those. So that's pretty much it. The, the other thing you can do here too is if you, um, if you have separate drawers and you, and you want to hit equal width. So this would work if you had split this into multiple, say if you had just two doors here and maybe this one was 36, oops, and you wanted them to be the same. If you just click this button, it'll, uh, it'll bring them back to equal or it should. Oh, sorry, if you hit unlock it, then it will bring them back to equal. So if you have this set to equal with doors and you hit, make sure that the heights are unlocked, it will equalize the heights. So uh, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.